Hi everybody, I am most of the way through grading your first lab videos, which have been so much fun to watch. Thank you so much for doing those. I know it's awkward, um, but it's been really great. It's really great seeing you guys, and actually I think a lot of you have better technique when doing it at home in that controlled sort of setting in a video than you would doing it in lab. I've seen some terrible technique in lab with people working with real microbes, um, so this, this was kind of nice to actually get to see you guys one-on-one -on -one like that. So I just wanted to say I'm having a lot of fun watching them. They're all great. Um, and I just wanted to make, give you guys some video feedback, some, uh, collective feedback. So I'm giving you all individual feedback in the comments, um, to your videos, but there are some themes that I'm noticing that I just want to make some, uh, class-wide announcements about. So first of all, I love your improvisation of materials, the various things that you're using to hold your tubes as your tube holders. Um, I saw egg cartons, I saw a Slim Jim, empty Slim Jim container, uh, and all those things just make me smile. Um, make sure that your camera is angled so that I can see all of your materials, including your Petri dish on the, on the counter when you're not actually using it. So. Um, I like to see your face. I don't need to see your face as much as I need to see your lab material. So make sure that I can see all of that because I am looking for your technique that you're properly handling things. So um, don't have, if you have someone videoing you, try not to scan away. Um, and if you're videoing yourself, make sure that your, your computer screen or your phone screen is actually getting the, the bench top, your bench top surface. Um, you, on that same note, I need to be able to see things clearly. So uh, there were some people who did group videos, which I love, love, loved. Love you guys getting together and collaborating just like you would in lab. It is a little bit harder to see if there's more than two people um, in the video. It, you become, it gets a little too far away, so I can't see your technique as well. I can't see that you're using the correct side of the loop or that you're using the right side of the plate. So just keep that into consideration that I need to be able to see so I can assess. Um, some people, it seemed like they were trying to work from memory, uh, like they had, like they memorized the script of the procedure, which, you know, kudos, more power to you, but you do not have to do that. This is not like a nursing skills lab practical. This is like a, you know, cooking like you're following a recipe. So in lab, you're always allowed and encouraged to read the instructions, refer to the instructions. So um, please don't be afraid to do that. You're absolutely allowed to do that and actually encouraged to do that. So no need to try to memorize it. Um, also, the sort of number one rule in the first lab, but throughout all the labs, is going to be that you handle things with proper sterile technique and aseptic technique. I don't want to see caps and lids open and stuff. So I, I deduct more points for those safety issues. And I know it's hard because they're not really real bacteria. You're working with mustard. Uh, but you have to pretend like it's real bacteria when you're handling it in these videos. You have to go through the motions as if this is the real deal, these are real bacteria. Um, and if you if you mess up something, it's good enough to just say that, you know, say it out loud, like, oops, I wasn't supposed to put that cap down. Uh, I should have, you know, kept it in my hand. You don't have to necessarily redo it, but just verbalize that you understand what you did wrong, even if it's in the comments of the video afterwards, like if you post the video and then you rewatch it and you realize, oh no, I forgot to turn off my Bunsen burner at the end, um, then just type in the comments like and say, I also meant to turn off the Bunsen burner at the end. So I know that you know where you went wrong and that's because that's what's important. Um, I don't intend for you to do like 30 takes until you get it perfect. If you take do one take and you make some mistakes, you don't need to re-record. Just you know, clarify to me in the comments that you you know you're, you're aware of that error and that's that was wrong. Um, some other things when you are flaming your loop, grab the kit over here. All right, a couple of little things I noticed. So these are your disposable loops. This is the loop end, and this is the needle end. Um, so when we're using our culture loop, this is the side you want to be using. And when you flame it in the Bunsen burner, 
it's important in lab that you flame things correctly. So the hottest part of the flame is right in the middle here. It's actually at the tip of that inner blue flame. And so that's where I wanna see you flaming your loop, not up here, not like out here, not with your Bunsen burner on the table and your, and your loop up here, but I wanna see it. I wanna see that you're doing it in the middle. So just go like this to your flame right in the middle there. Um, you don't have to narrate what you're doing. You don't have to say out loud, now I'm gonna flame my loop for 10 seconds. You can just do, you can have like music in the background, elevator music and just do the whole thing silently, that's fine. Um, but I encourage you to narrate it, to talk, to talk it out loud, say out loud what steps you're doing. Um, not only is it a little bit more informative that way, I can make sure that you are indeed, you know what you're doing, but it's also good practice for clinical experience because when you are performing something on a patient, a procedure to a patient, you, do, you want to tell them what you're doing. You want to say like, okay, now I'm gonna, you're gonna feel a tightness around your arm and now I'm gonna, you know, you're gonna feel a slight pinch as the needle goes in. So getting used to just sort of talking those things out loud is not a bad idea if you're going into nursing. And I even would be, ex it would even be acceptable to me if you talk to your, to your materials like they are a patient. Like if instead of saying now, I'm going to spread bacteria on the plate, you can say, and now plate, I'm going to spread bacteria on you. I don't care either, however you wanna do it. Um, but it, it is helpful when you narrate because a lot of a lot of you when you narrated you also did some explanation like you said now I'm spreading it out because I'm trying to dilute the bacteria uh, so that they are spread out so I get single colonies and that's great because that really just reinforces to me that you understand the procedure and why you're doing the things you're doing so if you're doing that already keep it up if you're not doing it and you don't feel comfortable fine but uh, but I really like it when you do. So, so there. And that's all. Those are all of my announcements. Great job. We won't be doing lab videos all semester long, probably just the first half of the semester. So hang in there. Um, I know they're a little awkward at first, but you'll get the hang of it. And if you don't, don't worry. I'm the only one who sees them. So that's all.